Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at satellites and projectile motion. So let's get started. Now, this says it's revision, and that's because we looked at it in the National 5 Physics course, but it's also relevant for the higher course as well. So it says here that a satellite is a special type of projectile that follows a circular orbit due to its constant horizontal velocity and constant vertical acceleration. So remember these are the two key things that make a projectile move in the way that it does, constant horizontal velocity and a constant vertical acceleration. The path followed by a satellite is called its orbit. And then we've got a question, so it says why does a satellite follow a circular path? Well, Sir Isaac Newton proposed a thought experiment to work this out, and it's known as Newton's thought experiment. So I'm going to take you through the simulations for this to show you how it works. So first of all, Newton said to consider a large cannon on the Earth's surface. And if you were to project the cannonball with a low velocity, then it's not going to move very far. So if I click here, you'll see that it only travels to about this point here. So that's with a low velocity. Newton then said what happens if we were to increase the horizontal velocity of that projectile? Well, if we project this now with a high velocity, you'll see that it travels further, but it doesn't do anything exciting. He then said, what if we took an even bigger cannon and we projected it with, again, a low velocity? Well, again, at a low velocity, the cannonball is not going to travel very far. But if we consider a high velocity, then you'll see that the ball is traveling much further. And it's traveling far enough that we actually need to take the curvature of the Earth into account, which is why you can see it slightly curving here now. And lastly, Newton said, what happens if we take an even bigger cannon on the Earth's surface and we project it with a high velocity again? Well, notice that we're now taking into account the curvature of the Earth, but it's going to come in and hit the Earth at some point along its motion here. However, if the cannonball was launched at a particular horizontal velocity, in fact, a horizontal velocity which matched the rate at which the Earth curved away from the cannonball, then it's actually the fact that the cannonball will continue to move around in a circular motion, like this. So what we're saying is that this projectile, or satellite in a sense, is going to continue to move in a circular motion around the Earth's surface because it's travelling at the exact horizontal velocity which makes it fall towards the surface of the Earth at the exact same rate as the Earth's surface curves away from it. And if this occurs, you get this continuous circular motion. If we were to then increase the horizontal velocity even more, it would actually be the case that the cannonball or the satellite would fly off instead of actually curving round. Going back to the notes now, we can just quickly summarise this. So consider a large cannon on the Earth's surface. If a projectile is launched with sufficient horizontal velocity, it will travel far enough before hitting the ground that the curvature of the Earth must be taken into account. Now imagine a projectile that is launched with such a great horizontal velocity that it never reaches the ground. This occurs when the trajectory of the projectile matches the curvature of the Earth. So there is the trajectory in green there. The satellite remains in orbit around the Earth because it is in a constant state of freefall. This means it is accelerating towards the surface of the Earth due to its weight. And as we said earlier, the satellite falls towards the Earth at the same rate as the surface of the Earth curves away from it. It therefore stays at the same height above the Earth in a circular orbit. And this is part of the reason why geostationary satellites appear to be at the same point above the Earth's surface. The last thing to look at now is called apparent weightlessness. And this is the idea of an astronaut floating in a spaceship, which you've probably been aware of before, but maybe just haven't given this name before. It says here that astronauts in orbit around the Earth are in a constant state of freefall. The spaceship, the astronauts and everything inside are all accelerating towards the Earth due to gravity. This is known as apparent weightlessness. And a careful thing to note is that the sensation of feeling weightless is because of gravity, not because the astronauts have escaped gravity or from the gravitational field of the Earth. And here's a picture of Chris Hadfield when he was doing his cover of Space Oddity whilst experiencing apparent weightlessness in space. And he does a few things like spinning the guitar around and stuff like that. So just remember that apparent weightlessness is due to gravity, not because people have escaped a gravitational pull. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe and give it one of these and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.